What is up everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be going over two different add-ons that can really enhance the immersion of Microsoft Flight Simulator. The first one we're going to be going over today is the pushback helper tool and the second one is our pack simulator, the Luke Air tool. So first we're going to showcase both of these in action within Microsoft Flight Simulator. Then we're going to show you where to download, how to install, and more importantly, how to use and set up the software. So stay tuned for today's episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. Are you my deadhead? Thanks for giving me a lift, boys. Go ahead and take a seat, Frank. We're about to push. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Delta Sky Team and our global partners, welcome on board your Delta flight. As you're making your way to your seat, we kindly ask that you please step into your row and out of the aisle as quickly as possible to allow those passengers behind you to make their way to their seat as well. If you're traveling with a larger roller board, please place it in the overhead bins, either wheels or handles first on either side of the aircraft. Keeping in mind that the overhead bin space is shared space, so if the bin directly above your seat is already full, please go ahead and utilize the next available space. In just a few moments, we'll be showing you the safety video. Once the video has concluded, we'll be in the aisles to answer any questions you have before we're seated for taxi out. Again, thank you for choosing Delta today. My name is Susan. I'm your purser for today's flight along with Charles in the economy cabin. We do welcome you aboard. At Delta, we think our world feels smaller when you get out in it. That's why the best men and women in the business work each day to take you to the people, places, and cultures that make this world such an amazing place. Bringing the world closer together, one flight at a time. Keep it true. 
Sheriff for takeoff. 80 knots. Check. V1, rotate. V2, positive rate. Gear up. Ladies and gentlemen, as we climb to our cruising altitude, we'd like to extend a special thank you to each of you and a welcome back to our SkyMall members and Million Milers. Your business and loyalty are greatly appreciated by the entire Delta family. For your safety, it's important to remain seated with your seatbelt securely fastened anytime the seatbelt sign is on. Even if the sign is off, please keep your seatbelt fastened in case we experience any unexpected rough air. We ask that you also please remember to use caution if opening the overhead bins to prevent injury from articles that may have shifted during takeoff. We've now reached an altitude where it's safe to use approved electronic devices and a listing of these devices can be found in Sky Magazine in the seat pocket in front of you. Ladies and gentlemen, as we begin our descent, we request that you return to your seat and make sure your seatbelt is securely fastened low and tight across your lap. If you've taken out any carry-on items, please make sure they are safely stowed underneath the seat in front of you or in the overhead bin. Welcome back, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the intro. Now let's get into where to download and how to install both of these fantastic add-ons. But make sure you go down below and hit that subscribe button and tick that little bell. Smash on that thumbs up button. So the first one we're going to talk about today is the toolbar pushback helper. When you click on the link below, it'll bring you up on this page, and we just want to scroll all the way down to the download button, hit the start download button. When you do, it should populate down in your web browser, so we're just going to allow that to finish. Once that's done, we can just give that a left click and bring up the unzipping tool. Here's where you're going to go up top and hit the extract, and we can choose where we want to extract this to. For me, it's going to my downloads folder, so I'm just going to hit the OK, let it extract to that location, and now I just want to open that file location. So I'm going to come down to the File Explorer, open her up, and head on down to the downloads folder. Give that a big old left click. So what we need to do first is to double click on this, and this file right here is a file that we're going to drag to our community folder. Now, just to be sure, what you can do is click on this one more time, and if it opens up the contents, then that was the correct folder. All you need to do is to go back up here, hit the back button, drag this right over to your community folder, and you are done with the install. So the second add-on we're gonna be talking about today is the Luke Air Tool. So once you go down below and click on the link in the description, it will bring you up on this page and we just want to come right up here to the top right and click on the download link. When we do, we're just going to come right over here and click on the download button, and that will now populate down here in our web browser. Once that's finished, just leave it alone because we've got one other step that we need to do. So before we extract the air tool, what we need to do is come over on the desktop and create a folder. So we're just going to right click, go down to new, and then highlight and select folder. You can call this whatever you want. I'm just gonna call it Luke Air. Once we have that folder on the desktop, we can now click on the Luke Air tool and unzip the file. Next, what we need to do is to extract these files to the folder that we had just placed on our desktop. So you just need to find the location of that. And that's why I said just place it on the desktop because it'll be pretty easy. All you need to do is come right over here, click on desktop, and then find the folder that you had just created. Just need to highlight it, click OK, and now it has extracted all of that information. So now that we've got everything extracted into our folder on the desktop, there's one more thing that we need to do in the Luke Air Tool website. And that is to come up here and to left click on the register. You just need to create a quick username and email and register, and that is pretty much it. Once you get that taken care of, you can then close out the website, and we are done with that. 
now we just need to go down here to the Luke Air folder and open that up and we're just going to scroll down until we find the Airtool EXE file or the application file. Next we're just going to double click on that and that will open our Luke Air tool up for us. One other tip I would recommend to do is to just drag this EXE file down here on our taskbar, drop it there, and now we will have a beautiful icon so we don't have to keep opening up this folder. Now once that's done, we can just exit out of that. Here's where you need to enter your credentials to open the Luke Air tool. So we're just gonna hit sign in and then enter your login username and password that you have just chosen on the Luke Air website. Once you enter your username and password, it may ask you to restart the application. I suggest to do that. And once you restart it, it should just bring you right up to your main Luke Air Tool page. From this page, we can do many, many things. And right at the top here, we have several different icons that we can choose. This is our home page right here. Next, we have the profile page. So this is gonna show all the different flights that you've done, any social involvement, current flights, and any of your friends. You can also adjust any custom announcements as well. Now, if you're like me, you probably don't wanna even mess with that, so you can just exit out of that. Next, we have our flight setup tab, and here's where we're going to choose whether we're doing a passenger or a cargo flight. Next, we also have the Your Office selection, and this is for the new career mode that Luke Airtool was implementing into their application. Now, it's not yet finalized, so some of these may or may not work, but it is a work in progress. Next, we have the events, so these are any live events or daily events that Luke Air may be putting on. If we move over here to the Tools section, here is where we can set up custom seating arrangements, custom audio. Again, if you're like me, you probably won't use that anyway. The next one we have here is the workshop icon. And if you click on that, this is where we're gonna be able to download our seat plans. So all you need to do is to just scroll down. Once you find the seating arrangement that you want, it will also display that arrangement down here below. Once you find the one that you do want, all you need to do is to come right over here to the download you click download and you have now downloaded it. The next tab we have over here is the settings tab. And this is where we're going to be able to adjust and customize the Luke Air tool for your needs. The first one we have here is the account settings. And I don't think this is used quite yet, but I'm sure it's gonna be implemented in the future. To the right of that, we have the main app selection. And here's where we can select all the different options for the main application. We can select the SIM that we're gonna be using. To the right of that is where we can adjust the length of time between each passenger boarding. We also have the altitude trigger below that. And to the right, we have three more options. Now, if you are gonna be using the toolbar pushback helper, you don't need to use the pushback assistant. And I also recommend to not auto load the announcements on start. This is cool because if you do have multiple things running, on your monitor that it will make sure that this is the topmost application. Underneath of that, this is fully integrated with SimBrief and here's where we would enter the SimBrief username and then hit the set button. To the right of that, we have the language that is experimental and below that, we have a couple other options. I always leave these three on and to the right of that, we have the VR setup. Now, I don't think any of these are working for VR at the moment, but we are gonna get into how to enable this in VR a little bit later on. So once you have all that set up, you can head on over to the social tab. And I think this is where it, yep, it links up with the Discord. To the right of that, we have the mapping section, and here's where we can choose which map provider we would like to go with. I always leave this on the Google Maps and down here below we can change our distance to kilometers or nautical miles as well. Once you have this set up to where you want, we're just going to head over here to the audio tab. Let's see what we got going on in here. So over here to the left, I, we have auto sync, automated audio and proximity audio. 
So what the auto sync is going to do is this will automatically sync up the audio with the correct carrier that you select in the Luke Air tool. It really doesn't matter to me. I leave that off because I select that manually anyway. Next, we have the automated audio. And this you want to check if you want all the audio to be automatic during your flight and you don't have to touch anything. Down below that is proximity audio. What that's going to do is if the announcements are playing in the cabin and you exit the aircraft via an external camera or drone camera, that it will mute the audio from the flight attendants. This is personal preference, but I keep mine off. To the right of that, we can select the captain's language. And below that, we have different volume settings for the main announcements, pilot audio, ambient, and ATC chatter. Yes, you can download an ATC chatter file and save that here. If you wanna know more about that, just click on the tutorial button and I'm sure it will give you more information on how to do that. So if we click on the last tab here is the customize button and I really don't do anything in here. If you'd like to know the progress of the Luke Air tool, all you need to do is hit the progress tab and it will show you the progress in which they're in for development. Once you've gone through and set all that, we can just exit out of that and we have all that set up for you now. Now what we need to do is do our flight setup. So under flight setup, we're gonna choose passenger flight and here's where we can enter all of that information. Now, if you have entered a SIM brief username, all you need to do is to come up here and click use SIM brief. You're not going to click sync data. I made this mistake many times and was scratching my head thinking, why is it not downloading my SIM brief file? So underneath of that, we're just gonna choose the type of aircraft we're gonna be flying for today. And over here to the right, we can pick a flight number. I don't really think this matters, but you do have to enter a flight number. And below that, we can enter what type of flight this is gonna be. We're gonna select commercial and choose your SIM. Below that, we have the manufacturer, and here is where it's gonna download all of your seating arrangements. Remember, we downloaded that Boeing arrangement, so we're gonna hit Boeing, go down the model, and now we can select the seating arrangement that we have downloaded. Below that we have the departure and here's where you're going to enter your departure and destination. Once you do that, you need to come over here and click the verify route button. Now, if you are using your SimBrief flight plan and you click the SimBrief, it will populate this for us down here. It will not populate this stuff at the top, but it will select our departure and destination and you do not have to click verify route when it does that. Below that, we have three more buttons. We have the Use Cabin Crew, and I suggest you turn that on. Instaboard is gonna instantly board all of your passengers at one time, so there's gonna be not much of a delay from when you start boarding. And over here to the left is where we can select a layover flight. Next, once you get done doing that, you can select the number of passengers, or you can hit the random button and let it do it for you. Hit the next, and we have just a couple more options here. Again, we have the auto announcements, so this way we don't have to touch anything and they go on their own. We can also use virtual airline announcements if you have a virtual airline set up. And we can choose to play the ATC live chatter. And you need that URL as required for that. Next below that, we have the airline, and here's where we're gonna select the airline that we're gonna be flying today. All you need to do is go down, highlight one, and then hit the next. Over here, it's gonna give us some weather information and the estimated flight time and the route distance. So once you get to this point, there's one more piece of software that we need to open, and that is the FSUIPC7 application. So all we're gonna do is double click on that and then open the application there it is. All we need to do now is go down and hit connect to Microsoft Flight Simulator, and then it will connect up for us. But we do not have to have this connected to Microsoft Flight Simulator to move on to the next step. So we can just now hit the Start Passenger Simulator. So this is gonna be our control window for using in Microsoft Flight Simulator now. 
but just keep in mind that it is not connected to the sim as of yet as you can see down here at the bottom and none of this will actually do anything yet until it is connected to the sim so at this point you can go ahead now and go right down below and start up the simulator if you have any questions along the way today please leave a comment down below don't hesitate to ask so now what we need to do is to open up Microsoft Flight Simulator so let me just push this off the side okay so now that we've got the sim open all we need to do is to come over here to the world map and choose our departure airport and that was gonna be BWI and we'll just pick a gate and hit fly. At this point, you want to make sure the FSU IPC is connected to the simulator. And once that is done, we should be good to go. Over here on the application now, we should also see at the bottom that the FSU IPC is now connected to the sim. Let's go over some of the icons. Over here on the right hand side, we have a bunch of different icons down here at the bottom. So starting from the right hand side, this is where we can turn on or off the ATC chatter. Keep in mind that you do have to have that installed in the audio section as we spoke about earlier. To the left of that, this is where we can choose to divert the aircraft to another airport. Next to that, we have the toggle Wi-Fi and this is just gonna turn the Wi-Fi on for your passengers. To the left of that, we have the toggle cabin crew and you want to make sure that you have this on so this way your cabin crew can tend to your passengers for you to the left of that we have the pushback and map toggle this is where we're going to activate the pushback assistant if you have it enabled remember we disabled that in the software here now to the left of that we have the metar data and if you give that a left click it will bring up the metar data and you can choose either your departure or destination airports To get back to your cabin crew audio, you just need to left click on that again and it will display all the different audio for the cabin crew. So now the only thing that we need to do that we have spawned into the aircraft is to go over here and hit the board. Once we do, it will have a cool little pop up down below and tell us that the passengers are boarding. And as that's taking place, you can see here that we have the passengers populating down in the seats. Now, if you'd like to have a little bit more information on those passengers, left click on that passenger and it will tell you their name and their age. So I think that's just a, another cool little addition to the immersion. Up here on the top, we have a couple other options here. So if we go over here to the number two, this is for any custom audio that we may have installed. And the very third one, here is where we're going to be able to adjust our announcement volume audio, as well as the ambient sound, ATC chatter, and the pilot announcements. Down below that, we have a couple other menus here. We have the manage tools, so we have a couple quick settings we can turn on do not disturb. We have charts, so we can also pull up charts. We can click the board instantly, which will board everybody very quickly and we also have an audio button here for the ambiance we can start and stop that as well over here on the info we have a couple other options here it'll tell you the cruise altitude passenger loading speed next to that we have view so here's where we can also select the metar the maps so next to that is the ota this is how we're going to activate the vr for the paxim software Again, we're going to get into that a little bit later, so stick around for that. So to the left of that, we have all the different pilot announcements that we can do manually as well. So let's just play one of these for you so you hear it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome on board. I will kindly ask you to take your seats as we are preparing for a prompt departure. Thank you. So just keep in mind that all of these are automatic as well as the flight crew. Over here to the left, we have the file. So we have settings, update, resize, and a couple other things. Not really necessary. If you would like to activate any of the sounds manually, all you need to do is to come over here to the top and you can just tap on any one that you'd like. 
If you want to stop the audio, all you need to do is come down here to the stop button and that will stop all of your audio for you. Let's go down here and hit the board instantly and see how long it takes to board all of our passengers. This is all live. This is all real time. I'm not speeding any of this up. And there you go. Everybody's boarded and the auto announcements are coming on now. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit the stop button here so we can get that off. All right, so that pretty much goes over how to use the Luke Air tool. Now let's talk about the pushback helper in the sim. So if you go up here to the toolbar, you should now have a little icon here for the pushback helper tool. When you click on that, we have a couple different options that we can choose, and we have the pushback, aircraft, or the options menu. The options menu, you can turn on or off various things here. Just go through those and choose as you'd like. So here's where we can select all the different ground services for the aircraft, as well as operate any of the external doors from here. Next to that, we have the pushback assistant, and here's where we can start the pushback. And if you just hit start pushback, Ladies it will God, now automatically Jordan. also trigger your announcements. And it will also trigger your pushback helper. So here we can adjust the tug speed on how fast it's going to do the pushback. We can also release the parking brake from here, and we can change the direction of the tug as well. Now, if you like and you have rudder pedals, you can also use those to direct the tug for your pushback. Once you get done, all you need to do is to hit stop pushback, energize that parking brake, and you are set. So if anybody has any questions about the pushback helper tool, please post those down below in the comments section. All right, so now let's go over how to set up the Luke Air tool for your VR session. Now, if that is not you, I would like to thank you for joining us here today on the channel. Make sure you go down below and hit that subscribe button and tick that little bell and smash on that thumbs up button. We'll catch all you guys on the next one. For everybody else that's sticking around, let's get into how to set up the VR portion. All right, so the first thing we need to do is to open that folder that we put the Luke Air tool in on our desktop. Then we need to come down here to the Tools folder and give that a left click. Now what we want to do is take this Luke Air Tool VR controls and we are going to drag this and place this in our community folder. As you see, I have my community folder down here and I'm just going to drag this and drop it right into the community folder. Now if we open that folder, we should see that Luke Air Tool right there. There's one more thing that we need to do on the Luke Air application, and that is the OTA. We just need to come down here and hit the Start Server. When we do, you should have a little icon here populate to show us that the server is running. Now if we open up the Flight Simulator and come up to the toolbar, we should have a blank icon over here, and if we click on that, that's gonna be our Luke Air tool options for VR. Here's where we can choose to either board or deboard the passengers. We can also activate any of the announcements manually from this. Now keep in mind that when you are using the VR control that you want to turn off any firewalls that you have on your PC. If you are still having trouble getting this part to work, I highly recommend to jump over to the Discord channel for the Luke Air tool and they can help you work through that. Well, that pretty much sums everything up for today. I wanna to thank everybody for joining us here. And if you have any questions, please post those down below in the comments section. Don't forget to hit that subscribe and tick that little bell and smash on that thumbs up button. To all of my flight simmer friends around the world, keep the blue side up and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching everybody.